Okay, uh, in this video I'm going to use MPLABX and we're going to have a look at the configuration bits. Before we do that though, of course, we're going to need a, a source file to work on. So I'll just create a new uh, source file using this simple template. And I'll just click finish. I don't want to change any of those options. So there's my very simple, straightforward assembly file uh, using a template. And it's got a prompt at the start saying, use the configuration bits generator. And that's a comment, of course, starts with semicolon. So let's just add a couple of extra lines there. And we can go to window, target mem memory views, and go to configuration bits generator. So this is going to generate the bits, which we can then copy and paste into our source code. So here's the... Uh, configuration bits generator and uh, you'll see there's loads and loads of options here and we're using the PIC 16F88 chip and the PIC 16F88 chip uh, has the option to use an external clock or oscillator or an internal one and that's one of the reasons why I like using the PIC 16F88 because it's got that internal uh, clock so just uh, makes the circuit that much more simple and also frees up a couple of pins as well which we talk about in a moment so uh, we've got these options here and for example I could choose an external clock and there's a couple of different options there but the internal ones they're the ones which I'm interested in and you've got the internal clock and then use there's there's two pins which we can look at in a moment use those two pins for general IO or enable the internal uh, oscillator clock and then use well um, use one of those pins uh, for something special related to the clock so let's just have a quick look at the data sheet and you'll see that um, these two pins here pins 15 and 16 they are potentially multifunction we need to configure them to say what they're going to do unlike say VDD pin pin 14 which just does VDD uh, so um, let's take pin 16 uh, could be a general IO pin in the um, port A peripheral uh, so that is uh, port A uh, RA7 or port A RA6 so we could use those for input output but um, equally they could, if we were using, say, an external clock, be used for the clock in and the clock out. Now, if we enable the internal clock, there's no need to use the clock in or clock out. So you could uh, configure these uh, two uh, pins here uh, to just be used for general I.O. Alternatively, uh, you might be interested in enabling the internal clock and then getting the instruction frequency out of pin 15 maybe for some timing thing or you want to monitor the frequency whatever so you can use you can enable the internal clock and then get that frequency out or rather get one quarter of the frequency out because it divides it by four so uh, just going back to MPLAB X uh, I am going to choose the option to enable the internal oscillator and then just use those two uh, pins just for general I.O. I'm, I don't want to get the um, clock out, but I might do, you know, another time. So I could always change it. Uh, watchdog timer, definitely off. Um, don't want to get into the detail of why, but unless you're doing something uh, a little bit more advanced, definitely not for beginners, leave the watchdog timer off. Uh, in fact, many of these could be left off. Um, Probably the master clear enable pin, that's the reset pin, leave that one on. Um, brownouts, reset, you can leave that one on off, doesn't make any difference. Low voltage programming, uh, low voltage programming off. Uh, what else? Um, in fact, you don't even need to do any of those, okay? So the main ones, these, these two now, just make sure that your uh, that you've selected the internal oscillator and you've turned the watchdog timer off. Now note that over on the right hand side it does give you more information. It says you've selected the internal RC oscillator 
and uh, because of the option you've chosen, the port I.O. function on both RA6 and RA7 is going to be available. Um, and then because we chose a WDTE off, then that means the watchdog timer is disabled. OK, so all of this thing here is just a like a wizard settings. doesn't actually configure your program. You need to click the generate source code button, which then creates this text, which you can then copy. And you can paste. And that now is part of your program. Should be possible to uh, clean this to build it. And you see that it says build successful. If you've got anything other than build successful, then something's definitely gone wrong. OK, so um, that's it for the uh, configuration bit um, editor or generator.